Hello and welcome to the Weather Studio. I'm Alex Deakin. And I'm Aidan McKiven. And for the next 15, maybe 20 minutes, there's a lot to talk about, we're going to be talking all things weather. Things that have happened, things that are going to happen, things in the UK, and things from right around the world. Please join in. This is as much for you as it is for us. Please send us your questions. We're going to be answering some questions throughout uh, the next 20 or 15 minutes or so. So please send us your questions and please give us a thumbs up if you like it. This is a newish form. Matt, we need your feedback. Tell us what you like, tell us what you don't like, but please be kind. Uh, what's coming on today's uh, show? Well, we've got some hot topics to talk about today. Heat wave in the UK, is there or isn't there? We have the official answer <laughs> from Bonnie Diamond, the Met Office press office, so she will give us the official definition or not, as the case may be, uh, whether we're seeing a heat wave this week. And she'll be talking about some people don't like heatwave. There are some issues around it, so we'll talk about that. And after that, we'll talk about noctilucent clouds. They are quite uh, often visible in the skies at this time of year. We've seen some pretty spectacular yeah, pictures beautiful. recently, yes, so yes. We'll, we'll showcase a few of those. But uh, speaking of dramatic images... What have we got first up? Take a look at this. Now, you've heard of dust devils. Yes. This is a hay <laughs> devil. A hay devil spotted in Devon, on Dartmoor, Stickle Path, Oakhampton, Vicky Chasty uh, filmed this. That's pretty big. That's pretty it big. Is. It's the sort of thing you don't expect to see in Devon. Uh, but actually, it's the same weather mechanisms that have caused this, that have caused other uh, dust devils around the world. They are quite common in other parts of the world, dusty parts of the world, well, yeah, generally. As, as, as the name would imply. So what's going on? What are these things? This is really dramatic. You just have to bear with it a I minute. Mean, this is a game of baseball. What happens uh, is uh, when, you, when you have some hot sunshine bearing down upon the ground, typically when you have quite a flat surface, when you have um, pockets of heat uh, rising from that surface, thermals, those pockets of hot air rise, they start rising quickly. And if there's some sort of disturbance, it can start a rotation within that rising column of air. And that's what's here we going go. on here. We here. Go. here we go. Take a look. <laughs> it's huge, interrupting the baseball. They're uh, really quite here. calm about it. I think if that was happening near me, I'd be a little bit more worried than probably that. Probably happens every other day. It and, probably you know, does. So it probably, they can one. go quite high up into the atmosphere, can't yeah, they? Yeah, and what happens is as they go higher and higher, that column of air gets stretched. So this rising, rotating column of air stretches. And if you imagine when you're ice skating, I know you you know, you're, you're quite good at doing the, the twirls, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. When you pull your arms in, you go faster, don't you? When you're spinning, uh, exactly okay. what's so happening here is conservation, conservation of angular, angular momentum. momentum. The column of, of air gets stretched and it can get faster and faster. Now, it, it's, it's similar to a tornado in the fact that it's a, it's a column of air that's rotating. Whirlwind, yes. yes. Yeah. But it's very different to a tornado. Uh, because it's, it comes from the ground up, yeah. it's created by heat, it's not created by a thunderstorm. That's right, tornadoes are attached to massive thunderstorms. This just comes out of nowhere on a blue skies, calm day. You need calm winds, otherwise the, the breeze will tear it apart. And they're, although they're getting a bit of problem with the dust in their eyes, they're not as destructive as a not as destructive as a tornado. Not generally, no. But they can cause a few issues. They can uh, lift up a few uh, bits of debris, so they're not entirely uh, mm -hmm. safe. There, there was one in Texas in 2010 I yeah. read about that lifted up a, a sort of inflatable castle type thing and the three children on it and, and moved them three gardens down the, the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So they are quite... Uh, they can be quite powerful. They yeah. can be quite yeah. powerful. Yeah. Here's a, a, an impressive picture taken from NASA. Uh, not sure that was from one of their satellites, <laughs> but just someone who works for NASA, but yeah. uh, Dust Devil in Arizona. And those are the types of places you normally get them. And Australia. And I've Aus seen them in Australia, Australia yeah. quite a few times. Yeah. 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 Tasmanian Hot, dry. Devil. Hot, dry. Uh, yeah. You yeah. don't normally expect to see them in Devon, but of course we had perfect conditions for Dust Devils at the weekend uh, because the weather was sunny, it was calm, temperatures rising and it's when you get that uh, those thermals rising now dust devils normally disappear when they go over ground that's a bit cooler and they lose that source of heat or if maybe a gust of wind knocks them over uh, but yeah quite extraordinary weather Very now yeah. up and down the country leading yes, to lots things of that hot we don't normally sunny see. weather hot and sunny weather right across the land at the moment across the uk it's continued from the weekend which leads us into a nice question again please do send us in your mm. questions this is an example of one we've had throughout this week jason Davis asked, uh, will we ever have a summer like 76 again? Now, of course, neither of us remember it, do we? 
No. You weren't born. No, well, you, I wasn't, you were. I wasn't even born. I was no. born, but only just. I was only two. But so we, we really do remember. hear a lot about. We do it. hear a lot. If you're a meteorologist, <laughs> you hear a lot about the summer of '76. Yeah, it was a pretty spectacular. As one someone who's heard like a that. lot about the summer of '76 recently, at uh, Bonnie Diamond. Yeah, let's bring in our guest. Let's bring in Bonnie. Come in, Bonnie. Hello. Uh, now, first and foremost. You work in the press office. What, what's your role, Bonnie? What, what do you do here at the Met Office? Yes, I do. Well, like yourselves, Ian and Alex, I um, am a, tr a trained meteorologist, but quite recently I, I made the move from meteorology into the Met Office pre press office here at, at Met Office headquarters. Uh, and my main role is dealing with the, the, the media and uh, the, the press from the UK to just make sure that they understand the, the, the weather. Um, and the, the weather warnings and make sure that the right message has been sent to the public and of course uh, the word on everybody's lips at the moment is heat wave. Yes, now when it's like this and it's blue sky everywhere everyone thinks that forecasters are oh, just pipe and slippers time they get to get to chill out which is kind of true for the weather forecasters the mm. meteorologists upstairs but if you're in the press office when it gets like this then it, it must be you must have been very busy recently. exactly it's not the case um with our phone is constantly ringing from journalists wanting to know but the is it the hottest june on record are we going to see another summer like 1976 um where will be the hottest temperature today so yeah constant questions and i guess one of the big questions which we're going to try and answer now mm. is it a heat wave what is a heat wave on it well, interestingly, the Met Office doesn't yet have a definition for heat wave. Uh, it's something that we are working on, uh, but we need to remember that in the UK, we have such a huge range of climates in the north of Scotland, it's quite different from the south of England. So when we're talking about heat wave, we really need something that's going to encompass the whole of the country. Uh, so still working on that. Uh, we do, however, have some guidelines from the World Meteorological Organization, and I have listed my piece of paper because it's, <laughs> it's, quite, quite, it's quite, quite intense, isn't it? It's quite a lengthy well. description, but... Uh, what do they say? What do the WMO say? They, the WMO the say a heat wave is a marked unusual hot weather over a region persisting for at least two consecutive days during the hot period of the year based on the local climatological conditions with thermal conditions recorded above given thresholds. So you can see it's really quite long. Imagine you've lost a lot yeah. of journalists. Yeah. Exactly. You lose a lot of journalists quite quickly with that. Exactly. So in what the message is it's going to be hot, it's going to be dry, it's going to be really quite sunny and that's... By pretty much anyone's definition the current weather we're having in the UK will be classed as a heat wave. Exactly. Yeah, it's <laughs> quite straightforward we this know. week, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. What's more important than the definitions is what can people do about it because actually it can have serious health implications can't it so what's the advice exactly well the Met Office works very closely with the NHS and Public Health England and we've got lots of messages um, going out to the public on what to do and what not to do in, in heatwave conditions so number one keep hydrated drink plenty of water you might not realize it even if you're not outside but you're losing moisture from your body so yeah. you could become quite dehydrated so drink plenty of water some fruit juice and um, if you are going outside which I don't blame you it is lovely <laughs> uh, try to avoid the hottest times of the of the day so between 11 and, and 3 when the sun is at its strongest and as we know last week was the summer solstice the sun's yeah. really high in the sky and people often don't get that they? they think oh just because it's hot the sun is strong but the sun is strong at this time of year no matter what it's at the solstice where the sun is at its strongest that's when UV levels are going to be high or very high stronger now than say in August even though temperatures in August can be higher it's actually the strength of the sun at the moment you exactly, need to be concerned yeah. about so please don't be the, the red faced person uh, <laughs> <laughs> Please put on the sun cream. You really do exactly. need it. Exactly. So your, fa your, your high factors, your SPF, yeah. FPS 50, etc. And also to make sure that not everybody loves the sun. Um, so you might have some neighbours, some family, some friends that you know might need a little bit of care, taking extra care making sure that they've got plenty of water, that the windows are open, the curtains are closed. And all this kind of advice is on the NHS website and help them. And, and uh, as Bonnie said, the Met Office here, we work very closely and all on their website and we'll put the link to their website um, in the description so you can click on there for, for more information Not just people about as well. No, no, oh, good point. Oh, no, Animals. Animals. Good point. Uh, it's, it's, I just wanted to put that in there because... Well, yeah. <laughs> ah, yeah, I mean, that's a clear sign that he's, he's thirsty there, so just making sure that your animals have uh, access to water too. Yes, yeah. that's a good point. That's and good dogs point. in hot cars, of course, the usual uh, warnings Experiment. there. Yeah. Yes. yes. Don't, so, don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. And of course, people have been comparing. Mm. I imagine lots of journalists have been talking about 76. Yes, and I certainly don't remember it. <laughs> of course <laughs> not. Of course not. Of course not. Um, but but it's, 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 some interesting stats yeah. about 76. So, 1976 still holds the record, records going back for some years of the sunniest summer on record and the hottest days. Now this map shows mean maximum temperatures, so daytime temperatures and the anomaly. That, that's generally two degrees or more above 
and yeah, it's average, pretty much countrywide. Country, country so, so it's, that was it's no wonder that people still talk about yeah. 1976 as the summer to beat. But it wasn't actually overall the hottest summer. Now, this is the average temperature when you take into account nighttime temperatures. This is 1976. Fast forward to 2006, more recently, and when you combine daytime and nighttime temperatures, 2006 was the hottest summer so on So the mean record. temperature was hotter in 2006. Very slightly hotter. It was the maximum yeah. temperatures in 76 that made it the hottest. That's right, and it was a particularly hot July in 2006. And just to Ooh. pick out another summer, summer of 1995, I can remember mm. uh, I was on my bike a lot, one. 11 years old, <laughs> up and down the, the street, always so nice and sunny. It was the driest uh, summer on record. So 76, again, wasn't the driest, even no. though they had the standpipes and all that. No, but I, I get, well, when you talk about the standpipes in 1976, that's what people remember, pumping the water That's what in the people street, remember, yeah. but it wasn't entirely due to the summer of 76. They had a dry mm. winter and a dry autumn before that, and 1975, the summer was dry as well. So it's that cumulative effect, which actually, even if we get a summer just like 1976, and it's way too early to tell, mm. we may not have the same issues because we've, of course, had plenty of rainfall in of course, the early before. part of spring and winter yeah. and, and so on. But let's talk about this June because it has been it has been a pretty remarkable June so far, hasn't it? I know a lot of gardeners desperate for yes, some rain. Yes, it has been. It has been very dry, and I've got some statistics for you. Ooh, so, how dry has it been? So yeah, it looks like, although we aren't quite towards the end of the month yeah. at the moment, as the statistics stand, we're currently looking at being the top nine driest June since records began. For the UK as a whole, we've seen just below 50% of the total rainfall for the month. And to break that down a little bit more, England has England and Wales both have just seen less than. 20, well, just about less than a quarter of the total rainfall for June. Wow. Yeah, yeah. so lots of dry fields and... and, and, and Very and, dry. Yeah. No and wonder I'm watering no, my garden every there's night. There's no rain in the forecast for the rest of June, basically, is there? Well, mm. exactly. So the, the although we're not quite at the end of the month, it, it looks prom yeah. promising. Yeah. And um, temperature-wise, June so far... Yesterday was the hottest day yes, of the year. Yes, it was. So far, we had 30.1 Celsius. But we could beat that in the next few days. What, what kind of temperatures are we looking at? Uh, so we are looking at temperatures possibly um, quite in western parts of the country, quite um, into sort of high 20s, possibly 30 degrees. But I think we're looking at a maximum of 32 Celsius either uh, today, Wednesday, or Thursday. And. and a, a subject close to your heart, oh, yes. Northern <laughs> Ireland. Can I because, just in, because, oh, interject oh, oh, there? Yeah. Because we have had a question. Oh, Someone's oh, obviously okay. picked up on your lovely accent. Thank you. Ab Toons has said, hi, what's the highest temperature expected in Northern oh, Ireland this week? Here we go. Here we go. Well, here we go. Here's the answer. I couldn't, I couldn't wait to talk about no. this. <laughs> uh, so we are actually looking at, at, I mean, I can't remember temperatures being this warm in Northern Ireland, but we're looking at temperatures into the high 20s and possibly even seeing 30 degrees or higher for parts of Western Northern Ireland. And my hometown of Derry is potentially going to get their um, record broken. Uh, June... The, what, what is the record? Well, exactly. The, the warmest ever temperature that's been in, recorded in Northern Ireland occurred in June in 1976, I think, and yeah. it was 30.8 Celsius. And there is a considerable likelihood that that temperature is the going to be beaten probably tomorrow or Thursday. In Northern Ireland. And we yes. could get to 30 Celsius in Scotland as yes, well. Absolutely. We've had 30 Celsius in Scotland before, but not for a while. It could be their first time for five years oh, I think, wow. that we've had 30 yeah. Celsius in Scotland over the next couple of days. So I was quite surprised when I heard that. Mm. Yeah, not, not seen 30 Celsius yes. for five years. They had 29.9 in uh, 2016. <laughs> Close, so I think, close, I mean, 1976. People, I think people will be talking about 2018 in the future as, as one yeah. of the. Yeah. Depends how long it's going to last. Yeah, yeah. when we're, when we're pensioners, we we'll be boring our. <laughs> not boring, <laughs> of course, not boring. <laughs> sure. There never, are more never questions never boring, if, you, if, you, if you bear with us. Yes, let's uh, look Bonnie. Look there are there are a few more questions that we've had plenty coming in actually. A still image productions has asked what is causing this heat and it, it's Ooh. quite an interesting mm, one isn't it because point. we're always talking when we get a hot spell in this country about southerly winds winds coming from the mediterranean or from africa aren't we well, this is quite different isn't it because we've seen high pressure slap bang over the uk Exactly. I don't know whether. Uh, so what's why? Well, why is it hotting up? Well, yeah, why so is it hotting up if it's high? If we're not importing well, sort of, our air from anywhere? Uh, I'm going back to my meteorologist days yeah. now. Um, so with high pressure in the east, it's, it's very much a homegrown heat. I think we would all agree right. mm. uh, that this high pressure centered in the east is bringing a really quite um, warm conditions uh, across. This is day on day. The exactly. Sun building. Because if you if you remember back to the beginning over. when this high pressure built in, it built in with relatively cool air following a cold front mm. at the end of last week. 
and each day temperatures have risen by about a degree or two in most places of the UK. And so it's actually, it's the strong sun that we've got this exactly, time of year, yeah. isn't it? And the dry ground that's just causing this heat to accumulate every day. So we're not bringing it in from Spain. No, it's a homegrown. We, we own it. Yeah. Yeah, we own it. <laughs> well, someone although, else, could, although, have, someone although, else could get it later. Things could change. There's a sign that come the weekend we may start to mm. see something coming up from the south which may then turn things thundery. But there's a lot of uncertainty mm. about that because that's the next big question. How long is it going to last? But I suppose the peak of the heat will probably be this week, Wednesday, yeah, Thursday. we're looking at Wednesday, Thursday. But there's still a lot of sunshine. It's still warm, even yeah. though it's not going to be quite as warm into the into the weekend, uh, it's still it's still warm. Fantastic. Yeah. Bonnie, thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's brilliant. Thanks That's for great, having great me. Information. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much for, for coming on the Weather Studio. Any more questions, Aidan, or are we moving oh, plenty on? Plenty of oh, questions. Right, okay, okay, yeah. good, good. LFCFC. James has asked if the temperature, for example, is 30 degrees outside and the record is 33, but the feels like temperature oh, right, is 35, okay. does this count as the new record? Well, the quick answer is no. No. Because no. Um, we don't know what the feels like was when we hit the 33. And feels so. like is quite subjective. Yeah. I mean, it, it's well. in this kind of weather that, you know, you tell people it's, uh, for example, on a sunny day, the winds are light, it's 23 degrees, and they go outside. It's, they say, well, it feels much hotter than 23. Yeah. But that's because the winds are light, the sun's beating down, and the air surrounding their skin heats up to much more than 23 yeah. degrees. 23 is just the number on the thermometer in the shade. Um, which is a consistent way of collecting temperature measurements across the country. The air surrounding your skin depends on so much more, whether you've been exercising, what you've eaten, what kind of person you are. All those things yeah. end up having uh, an impact on how you feel outside. So it can feel much hotter, and that's why temperature records are based on these thermometers in the shade. In the shade. Of course, that's important to know because often people talk about the temperature on their cars and stuff like that. But it needs to be measured in a Stevenson screen, one of those little weather screens that we have a certain distance above the ground, a certain distance away from buildings just to keep things consistent. That's how we do it. Uh, and yes, as I said, temperature is going to peak over the next couple of days. More information on that on our other videos. Of course, you can get the detailed weather forecasts through those. And of course, don't forget our sister channel, Learn About Weather, where there's all sorts of really cool videos explaining all sorts of different weather phenomena. And we're going to talk about another one of those now because what is this we've got behind us, uh, Aidan? These are clouds. Yes. But they are not just ordinary clouds that we find relatively close to us on the ground. These are something called noctilucent clouds. And do, you know what, do you know what noctilucent? Night and lucent means illuminated, so night, shining night clouds, basically. Yeah, and, and they, they are come out at night. They yeah. are the highest of all the clouds. Now, when we talk about clouds that we normally see, like stratus, the lowest, only 100 feet above the ground, uh, cumulonimbus can stretch right the way up from a couple of uh, hundred feet all the way up to several thousand feet. The highest of the sort of standard clouds, you might say, would be cirrus or cirrocumulus at uh, 30,000 feet, where the aeroplanes tend to fly, uh, but these are up to around 200,000 feet up wow. in the sky. Yes, they are very high clouds indeed, the highest of all the clouds, and they are made of ice crystals, but you can only see them at certain times of year because they are so high up. You basically need them to be lit from the sun below. That's how you get to see them. So it, only at night and only in the summer months and only generally between about 45 and 70 to 80 degrees latitudes in the Earth. You can't see them close to the equator. And they tend to be at about 15 or 20 degrees above the horizon. So go out at night. I remember going on top of the BBC Weather Centre and spotting some of these oh, right. about 10 years ago. It was phenomenal. It's quite eerie because they're just all silvery blue and you can just see them in the Perfect weather there. for at the moment. Clear it skies, is. Exactly. long evenings. And the perfect time of year. Yeah. And uh, Brecon Beacons there, Alan Wallace actually takes some lovely photos of the Brecon Beacons, I follow him. Um, and this is Sean Batty, STV presenter in Scotland. Uh, these are taken in Glasgow. Beautiful. Yeah. beautiful. Ice crystals, the ice crystals form them, a bit like um, all the high level clouds. But it, it, one of the interesting things is it's thought that they're, they're formed because they need a nuclei to form them, formed around cosmic dust. So they're almost Ooh. cosmic clouds. Yeah, that's pretty. Pretty impressive, isn't it? And they are absolutely beautiful. So if you can get the opportunity to go outside, uh, say around about midnight or just after is the best time to go and see them because they are, if they are there, but they are very rare indeed. So just yeah, keep your eyes on social media. That's the best way to do it, isn't it? And then yeah. you can spot other people who may have seen them and you get to get some top tips around that. But uh, not to loosen clouds, absolutely stunning things. Now, right. we've talked a lot about high pressure in yes. the UK. Let's and when we have high pressure over the, the UK, of course, it means that low pressure must be somewhere else and at the moment you can see this L here this low pressure is over Greece and 
we are expecting some very turbulent weather over Greece during the next uh, couple of days or so. Thunderstorms, let's put on the rainfall there and zoom in a small amount. Uh, these thunderstorms will be particularly focused across northeastern parts of Greece and of course as there are thunderstorms they'll be very hit and miss but uh, some areas could see a really substantial amount of rainfall, risk of flash flooding several hundred millimetres. Yeah, up to 500 millimetres of rain could millimeter. fall over a day or so in, in, parts of, in parts of Greece. So these could be really quite serious, just very, very intense thunderstorms. I mean, you do get thunderstorms in, in the summer months because obviously you get the heat and you get the humidity. But uh, yeah, if you were on holiday there at the moment, you might be a little bit disappointed mm. given that the UK is getting temperatures up to 30 Celsius. Western uh, parts of the Med um, storms. a lot quieter. We have had a lot of unsettled weather in the Mediterranean. Yeah, it's not been a great um, few months across Spain and Portugal, has it? But how about Russia? Well, because there's a, a bit of a game going on, Aidan. Thursday night, of course, England against Belgium. OK. In, uh, in Kaliningrad, Thursday, 7 o'clock, British summertime. Um, temperatures, there we are. You've got it up there. Temperatures about 25 degrees in the afternoon, which is pretty warm for the time of year for this part of the world, Kaliningrad. Um, but by the time we get to kick-off, we're looking at 18, 19, maybe 20 degrees Celsius because it'll be evening time there. The humidity will be dropping. There's only the very small chance of seeing a shower. So the weather looks pretty good, actually, for England against Belgium. Uh, the game earlier in the week was, was all about the heat and humidity. It doesn't look to be that bad. It looks to be Yeah, you can conditions. see that the hot air, actually, there's an arc of hot air there for northwestern parts of the UK. So it's actually cooler there in Kalin Kaliningrad. Uh so will there be thunderstorms in the UK this weekend? Well, there are now indications uh, of uh, perhaps some thundery activity. Uh, I need to tell sometimes it's this fine attack. Um, but also an increased threat of thunderstorms. So perhaps. the message at the moment is stay tuned. Now, oh, back by popular demand, we've just got time. There's so many of the answers. And well, now you're going to you're going to give me a difficult a, one let's now. Let's just aren't have you? a quick. Currently playing in the World Cup, Mexico. What sounds. It's a wind in the Andes. <laughs> Chilean. Did I get zero? Out no, you got one. Oh, I think. Okay. I think you got okay. one. You went for wind. <laughs> It's yes, easier when yeah, you're sitting at home when you're here. It's easier at home. It may, yes, easier yeah, when you're sitting at home 